Good morning, everyone. We thank God so much for today. It's been a, a challenge to bring the broadcast to you this morning because the network right here in Nigeria is very, very slow. And we apologize for coming up late, but we couldn't help it. It's now that the network has come back on. So we are just going to have a very, very short broadcast. Please bow down your heads with me as we pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the blessing of today. Thank you for giving us the gift of life. We, we give you all the glory, all the praise. We don't know what we would have done without you. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. And as we look into your word today, we pray that you give us a word in season. Help us understand, O oh Lord, this word in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes that we may behold the wonderful things that you have for us today. We give you praise, give you all the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take absolute control in Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly turn your Bibles with me to 1 Kings chapter 2. I would urge that you read the whole chapter after the broadcast. We will not be able to read it all because of the time. But basically, when you read 2 Kings chapter 2, from chapter verse 1 all the way to 46, you will see um, this is the story where King David was uh, on his dying bed. And on his dying bed, he gave Solomon some instructions to carry out the wishes of a father. A father's wish is the topic we are looking at today. And um, Solomon obeyed and hearkened to the voice of his father. He carried out the wishes of his father. And that brought establishment into his kingdom. Because he carried out the wishes of his father, his kingdom was established. He became very rich to the point where gold became like stones in his kingdom. When he carried out the wishes of his father, he had peace. What was the wish of his dying father, King David, on the bed? He was to kill Joab and kill Shimei. Why? Because in David's lifetime, Joab disobeyed him on several accounts and brought um, a lot of distress. And Shimei also cursed David when David had issues with his son Absalom. Shimei cursed David and because of that there was a little uproar, there was some um, doubt in the minds of people as to whether David was truly authentic and all of that. So David told Solomon on his dying bed that he should execute these two people. Now it could be that on his dying bed, several questions may have arisen from in Dave Solomon's mind as his father was giving him these instructions. Because this was a man who was not perfect. He, he ended up carrying someone, taking someone's wife. You remember Bathsheba, Uriah, his wife. He carried Bathsheba, slept with her. And as if that was not enough, she got pregnant and asked that he should be executed. And got he, uh, someone, Joab, to kill his own soldier, one of his own servants. And along the line, his family got disintegrated. Uh, abs, um, Ammon raped the sister, uh, Tama. Absalom also rose up and several things happened so it could it is David's life was not perfect so even as Solomon was listening to the instructions he could have decided not to obey it because looking at the life of his, of his father he wasn't perfect things were not exactly 
perfect and sometimes we make the mistake of not listening to our fathers and our mothers because of their faults but a father or a mother is in a place of They are in that place of authority and if we obey them things will go well with us when you read ephesians chapter 6 uh, the popular verse verses verse 1 to 3 it says that children obey your parents in the lord obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise what is the promise that it may be well with thee and that and thou mayest live long on the earth it is not well with us when we do not carry out the wishes of our father it is important that we carry out the wishes of our father so that things will go well with us so that we'll live long on the earth my husband when preaching this message always says that there is no anointing to live long you cannot go to your pastor and kneel down before him to lay hands on you uh, anoint you with olive oil anointing oil to live long you are only getting wet there is no anointing to live long there is an instruction to live long the instruction is to obey is to obey our parents in the lord and in life god is going to give god gives us several opportunities to obey several opportunities to obey our parents why do i say several apart from the fact the length of time in life there are also points where you have uh, different fathers you may have uh, your biological father your spiritual father the one who brought you into the lord you may have a father in ministry you may also have a father-in-law and if your father-in-law is good you will enjoy and also benefit from him as you carry out his wishes for example moses benefited greatly from jethro who was his father-in-law and that brought about uh, longevity in his ministry it helped him to be able to share the burden so if you carry out the wishes of your father the one that god has placed in authority over you it will things will go well for you solomon became successful his fame has gone gone all this far and has transcended generations we are still studying and reading about solomon because he carried out the wishes of his father king david things are not So Ephesians 6 verse 1 to 3, when we read that, the end the verse 3, it said that it may be well with thee, and that and thou mayest live long on the earth. It is not well with us. We are not living long. Our lives are being cut short. Things are not working for us because we are not carrying out the wishes of our fathers. Jesus carried out the wish of his heavenly father when he came down here on earth. That was why he was successful. So for us to be successful, we need to carry out the wishes of our fathers and mothers, as the case may be. When you carry out the wish of your father, you are actually honoring your father. And that releases a blessing upon your life. When you disobey your father, you bring dishonor. When you listen to what your father says and you do it, you are actually honoring it's not about buying gifts it's about carrying out the wishes of our fathers now jesus we read this in john chapter 15 verse 10 if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love your father will love you if you carry out his wishes if you carry out his commandments god we abide in his love when we listen and carry out his wishes 
you wonder why certain children are favorites they are favorite because they are abiding in the love of their parents as a result of they carrying out the wishes of their parents carrying out the commandment that has they been given my father's bishop that your meal says that another instruction solomon had from his father was to deal with joab and shimei and he dealt with them he executed both of them just as his father had given you will notice that after solomon fulfilled his father's instructions the kingdom of israel became established under his rule in first kings 2 46 although solomon thought he was just obeying his father's instructions he was actually stabilizing the nation without knowing it obey your father's instructions even when you don't understand them even when you don't understand the instruction it's important to obey them you will unknowingly bring a blessing upon your life a sweet spiritual blessing follows a man who honors a father a sweet spiritual blessing follows a man who honors a father it cannot be explained logically it is a spiritual law that has been set in place for thousands of years don't fight it because you cannot Flow with it and you will come into the type of success that Solomon enjoyed. I want you to grab these two books, Principles and Practice of Spiritual Guidance and the Art of Following. These books will help you. They will help you greatly to understand this topic much better and to have a successful life, to live long and happily here on this earth. That things will be well with you grab these two books today call the numbers that will be scrolling on your screen shortly and also visit www.dagiwamills.org click on the worldwide offices and you can have access to all of these books when you click on your country after that you can also visit dagiwamillsbooks.org and get the soft copy of the books if you want access to his messages whether audio or video please visit that your meals audio or video dot org and you can have access to all of his messages they will help you and be a blessing to you now all roads lead to ghana this weekend we are going for the give thyself holy conference this weekend and most people will be going on monday it is going to be just awesome lives and ministries are going to be transformed my father is currently in kinshasa right now in congo holding the give thyself holy conference and i'll urge you to tune in like his page is that your meals like his page so you can get notified and join in and be blessed your ministry will go from one level of glory to the other you just do not want to miss it it will be a blessing to you this has been a quiet time with Mrs. Mandate, brought to you on behalf of my husband, my king, my lord, my covering, Reverend Peter Bright Sr., the one and only living mandate. We thank God that we're able to bring it to you, even though it was short, but we were able to overcome the challenge of the network here, and we thank God so much for that. I want you to remember that you are a daughter and a son of the Most High God. He created the whole world and everyone and every single thing in it therefore you cannot be a victim of your circumstances you are a victor you are more than a conqueror says the lord have a beautiful day and an awesome weekend i'll see you on monday by the grace of god at 6 a.m gmt plus one bye